The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit where we learn about basic electronics. Today we're going to build a kit that uses an op amp to boost sound. A Veleman MK136 Super Stereo Ear. This kit uses an NE5532 op amp. So the IC contains two op amps. On the pinout, you can see pins four and eight are the supply voltage pins. The inverting and non-inverting inputs and the outputs of each op amp. Each op amp amplifies the signal from one of the two microphones and outputs the signal to a phone jack. Looking at the schematic, we can see that each op amp has a near isolated circuit and that the two circuits are identical. The signal comes into each microphone, is processed through the op amp, and the output signals stay separate, providing the left and right channels for a stereo audio signal. These Veleman kits always tell you the order for assembly, so let's get started. As usual, we start with the lowest profile components and work up to the tallest. Step one is to solder all the resistors. Start by finding the two loose 10K ohm resistors, brown, black, orange, and place them in R1 and R2. R3 through R6 are 220 kilo ohm. These are the four attached resistors, red, red, yellow. Place them on R3, R4, R5, and R6. Careful when bending the leads over to not accidentally make any unintended connections between pads. The next two are 8.2 ohms, gray, red, gold. Place them in R7 and R8. Next is five 1 kilo ohm resistors. The five attached that are brown, black, red. Place them in R9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Then two loose 47 kilo ohm resistors, yellow, purple, orange. Place them in R14 and R15. So the last resistor is a zero ohm resistor. Sometimes in PCB design, there's a place where you can't easily make a jumper or you can't connect your traces, and so they'll add a resistor place and then just put a zero ohm resistor that acts as a jumper to make that connection. For step two, find all three non-polarized capacitors. Their places will be marked with this symbol. One should be labeled 104 and two labeled 101. Place the larger 104 in C10. Place the two others labeled 101 in C11 and 12. The instructions for step three says to bend the LED over, then solder. I found that this is personal preference. This LED is the power indicator light that will come on when the power switch is turned on. You can solder it straight up or bend it over, whatever you prefer. Place the LED in LD1. Watch the polarity. 
The short lead goes in the white hole. Step four is the power switch. Find SW1 and solder it in place with the switch facing out. Push the switch left for off. Step five is the IC socket. Be sure to align the notch on the socket with the notch marking on the board. Step six has us attaching four pins, two for each microphone. The pointy end of the pin goes into the board. The microphones then get soldered to the pins. If the microphones were soldered directly into the board, they would be facing up, but instead we want to get a good stereo signal, so they're going to be facing diagonally out. This can be a little tricky. You might have to bend the pins in a weird way. There's a lot of metal here, so it'll take a little longer for the solder to flow properly. Make sure the solder flows onto the pin well. Step eight is all the electrolytic capacitors. There are four one microfarad, three 470 microfarad, and two 10 microfarad capacitors. Place the four one microfarad caps in C1, C2, C3, and C4. Once again, be sure to mind your polarity. The lead with the line is negative, so the other lead goes by the plus sign. The three 470 microfarad capacitors go on C5, C6, and C7. And the two 10 microfarad capacitors go on C8 and C9. Step nine is the phone jack. It'll only fit one way with the jack facing out. Placing it flat on the desk holds the part in place well for soldering. Step 10 is the variable resistor that will be the volume control. Place it with the knob facing out. I'm going to do steps 11 and 12 out of order. Step 12 is soldering and attaching the battery pack. Solder the red wire to red and the black wire to black. Next, take the screws, spacers, and nuts and use them to screw the battery pack to the back of the PCB. Tuck the wire if you want to keep it a little tidier. Last, place the op-amp IC into the socket. Bending all the pins using the surface of the table will help align them with the holes in the socket. Okay, now we just need to add three AA batteries. So the kit has two microphones to take in the audio signal and then it amplifies it but we have to plug a speaker into the phone jack so we can actually hear the amplified sound. Uh, I'm gonna use this speaker and it's a little wary because it has a pre-wired uh, AUX cable that's a little short and I have found that if the microphones get too close to the speaker, there is a feedback problem, but we're gonna try it anyway. And I'm just gonna be careful with the 
uh, volume that we use. So I'm gonna plug it in, make sure my microphone is facing away from the speaker, turn them on my kit. All right, let's see if, all right, let me turn my volume up on my board a little bit. Okay, hello, hello, hello. All right, so my microphone is picking up a stereo signal and outputting it out of my speakers. These are not the best speakers. I actually don't know if the audio quality problem is because of the microphones or the speakers or both, but all right, I don't know. This thing's pretty cool. Looking at the data sheet for the 5532 op amp, we can see that there is a gain of anywhere between a minimum of 10 or 15 volts per megavolt up to 100 volts per megavolt. I thought it would be fun to use my new Keysight oscilloscope for the first time and use it to check out the difference between the signals of the microphone and the signals of the speaker. So I have my microphone hooked up to my green probe and my speaker hooked up to my yellow probe. So you can already see right now that the green signal is really, really small and the yellow signal is really big. Uh, let me turn those on. Woo! So um, you can see that the yellow signal is giant as I'm talking. That's the amplified signal. Uh, I'm gonna modify these really quick and zoom them out a little bit more so we can see a little more definition in this wave. Okay, I had to do a little jiggery pokery with my uh, Keysight oscilloscope over here. Uh, but I think you can see now that I have my yellow microphone signal on the bottom and my green speaker signal on the top. Actually, I'm gonna make this green one a little bit smaller. Now if I make noise and I freeze it, okay. You should be able to see that where all of the high points, there's a high point and all the low points, there's a low point. Uh, so the yellow microphone signal is getting amplified into the green speaker signal. Yay! Like previous projects with microphones, you could connect the microphones to the PCB using wire, which would allow you to position them wherever you want in a project. Keeping that in mind, what would you do with this project? You could keep it as a kit, but building it into a project sounds like way more fun. So tell me your project ideas and post those on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Wait, wow. 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 <laughs> Perfect.